Fossil Fuel Monster Energy Sign is a game that surprised me. Only a couple of years ago, I covered the original Fossil Fuel. Since then, he has released an Alien Isolation style game in VR featuring a raptor and Fossil Fuel Monster Energy Sign. These games are made by a single person, and that comes with everything you would expect. At a glance, you might assume they're an asset flip, but Fossil Fuel is a good example of a difference between being an asset flip and reusing assets. These games look genuinely good at times, but being made by a single person without the money to hire a team, a lot is going to be lacking. Animations are going to be lower quality. You're not going to be able to hire voice actors. Keep your voices down. There's raptors all over the surface. We were safer underground, and we gotta get to those boats now. So a single person project is what you should expect. However, there's one thing that Fossil Fuel has that most AAA games nowadays don't have passion. It's very clear that these games have a focus, and the person behind them was nerding out on stuff the whole time he was making it. Nerding out on what, you may ask? Dinosaurs, as if that wasn't obvious. Fossil Fuel was a almost blatant retelling of the original Jurassic Park. I'll let you over here. It's a campy B-action movie shoved into a video game. Its mechanics were solid enough to make a decent game. It swapped back and forth between survival horror and a more traditional first-person shooter, but with dinosaurs. And we can always use more dinosaurs. I really miss all the first-person shooters with dinosaurs we used to have. They just don't exist anymore. The dev behind Fossil Fuel actually found my video. At first concerned at the title of the video, but then leaving a positive comment, because the video was not really that negative. When you see my video titles and they have names like, How Bad Is Insert Game Really? That's not a statement, that's a question based on how the public has perceived that game. I want to challenge that question and hopefully find out that the game actually isn't that bad. Unfortunately, it usually is just that bad. So yeah, I came away pleasantly surprised at the first game, but I don't quite feel that way about the second one. And that's disappointing because I really want to like it. I like what this game is. I love its concept, but its execution was a bit rough. And I don't want to be mean to the person that made this game. <laughs> They're trying their best, and again, there's a lot of passion behind it. What are you doing? Go. Let's start with the graphics. As far as a PC release goes, there's a few improvements from the first game right away. One of the biggest complaints I had from the first game is that there was no way to turn off motion blur. If you wanted to turn off motion blur in the first game, you had to turn off post-processing a common thing you'll see amongst new game devs using the Unreal Engine. This is super annoying, and I complained about it in the video. In the comments, he acknowledged that, and now there's a way to turn out motion blur in-game. Yes, nice. In fact, there's pretty much all the options you'd want to have here. Yes, including an FOV slider. So on that side, I don't really have any complaints. And once you boot into game, this looks really good. I was quite surprised with how much Dangerous Bob has improved in just a couple of years. Now, of course, this comes with the caveat that animations are still pretty rough and voice acting is even rougher. But I came into this game expecting these things. That stuff costs money and much larger teams, so you get what you get. The real big asterisk is how this game performs. It is horribly optimized, to the point of completely making every positive I had about the graphics moot. It's not out yet. Oh my god, my frame rate. Oh sweet Jesus. This game runs at 20 to 30 FPS on a 3080. This fluctuates quite a bit, but I never had a solid frame rate. It's almost unplayable. Yes, the first game had some frame rate drops, but those were kind of exceptions. That's the norm here. If you get a headache watching this video, I'm sorry, I really can't control that. Apparently, Unreal Engine 5 is super not nice to game devs, and I believe it. The story, on the other hand, is, well, kind of the same story. In the first game, the story was more or less a campy redo of Jurassic Park. Somebody brought dinosaurs back, one party wants to destroy the island the dinosaurs are on, the other part wants the dinosaurs to roam free, another part wants the dinosaurs for themselves. Again, it's basically just Jurassic Park, and that's fine, it actually worked. Two years later, I can tell you who the bad guys were and weren't, and I can tell you both the good and bad endings. There are many AAA games I can't even do that with, but if I had to tell you the story of Fossil Fuel 2, I just have no idea what happened. So, Fossil Fuel 2 takes place after the events of Fossil Fuel 1. You're dumped off on that same island. You are tasked with retrieving the source code for something. And that's basically all I know about the story. I don't know who the bad guys are. I don't know who the good guys are. 
that's just it. Now there are multiple endings, so you might ask, well that makes no sense, if there's no story, how are there multiple endings? Well, once you do retrieve that source code, you're asked to give it to one of your allies. If you do give it to him, you get the good ending. If you don't give it to him, you get the bad ending. What changes between the good and bad ending? Pretty much nothing. In the bad ending, you fight humans for a little bit, get a section of the game shoved in there that you wouldn't usually see, and then everything else is the same. So again, I don't know what the point is here. It's like they tried with the story, but then also didn't try at the same time. But you're not here for any of that. You're here for the dinosaurs. Little known fact, I'm part T-Rex. Brother! I don't know what I expected. Yeah, these dinosaurs aren't exactly friendly. The game starts with you on a boat, immediately attacked by a megalodon. And this gives you the ability to listen to some of the best voice acting I've ever heard in a game. Hey! Hey, Jack! Are you still alive? Hey! Oh my god! Wait, was I supposed to read something important? I, I stopped paying attention, that made me lose my train of thought. This dumps you on shore with no weapons. Much like the first fossil fuel, there's a roadblock and a dinosaur in your way. In this case, you need to pump out all the water blocking the silo. The result is a pretty basic alien isolation style game where you have to sneak around a raptor and hide in vents to not die. A common trope amongst dinosaur games is that there's a bunch of ways for you to die horrifically with in-game cutscenes. And most of them in this game are pretty underwhelming. In the raptor's case, it's a 50-50. One is confusing, I didn't even realize that it was supposed to be eating you out of a vent, and the other one is fine, I guess. Fuck it! Jump on it! <laughs> oh wait, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, I wanted to know what the death scene looks like. Where did all the other dinosaurs come from? But after a little bit of sneaking around, the game gives you a gun really quick. And at this point, the best way I can describe this game is what if Jurassic Park met aliens? And that sounds awesome. That's an amazing idea. The guns themselves, well, they don't feel great. Again, I kind of expected this as this dev isn't going to have a ton of experience with proper animations and all of the gunplay is what he's figured out on his own. The pistol itself is a little underwhelming, but that doesn't even really matter. The shotgun replaces it really fast. Once you get a gun, that survival horror element kind of goes away entirely. Until this guy shows up. Alright, this is one of the... the... I've got two drives I needed. Hello, intruder. You are in possession of Sierra proprietary property. I am therefore forced to take action. In front of you, you see one of our research subjects, a prototype variant of our Homo erectus rex. This mutant is not only strong, but poisonous as well. This variant is codenamed Goliath. He will hunt you no matter where you go. Good luck, intruder. Yeah, so as it seems, the AI on this facility has gone rogue. It needs to protect these dinosaurs no matter what, even if that means getting rid of you. So I guess that is this game's villain. The way it plays out is odd. It's like if Half-Life Alex's Jeff was mixed in with regular enemies. You can't do any damage to this enemy, and it will hound you around for this whole chapter. For this chapter, the map is quite big. You have this gorgeous museum, I must admit. Like, this area does look really good. And you have an elevator to take you to multiple different floors. You have an object on each floor you need to grab. So you're gonna be dealing with this guy a lot. Thankfully, he's not really that big of a deal. You can kind of just run away from him without worrying about it. It definitely doesn't come close to the effect that Half-Life Alex's Jeff had, but again, I'm trying to compare this game made by one person to a game made by Valve. And that's just not fair. It's fine. It's a little annoying at worst, but... It did what it's supposed to do. Regardless, once you explore all these floors and go back to what you needed to open, you will eventually fight this new enemy. And this boss battle is incredibly underwhelming and honestly really goddamn boring. Since you can't do any damage to it by any traditional means, you just need to zap the ever-living shit out of it. Problem is, this takes forever. It now has a rocket launcher on its back, but the rockets are comically slow and so easy to dodge that he'll never actually damage you. And the recharge every time you shock him is 30 seconds, and you need to do this five or six times, so yeah, this is your boss battle. Woo. Most of the other enemies you'll fight in this game are some variation of raptors, which 
is fine. They don't really portray any sort of high-level intelligence, but making AI is difficult. They mostly just run straight at you and you blast them with a shotgun. At least until this boss battle comes up, and it runs straight at you and you blast it in the head with a magnum until it dies. Or you don't, and once it starts charging you, you are guaranteed dead. Ow. Hey, I've seen that before. Honestly, this boss battle is fine. It's, it's very simple, but it's really nothing to complain about. The section right after is something to complain about, though. You know when games love doing the floor is lava and how it usually is more annoying than anything else? Yeah, this game does that, and it's more annoying than anything else. If you fall in the water, you're guaranteed dead. There's an electric fish thing that'll shock the fuck out of you. This'll be a mild nuisance at worst. However, the platforming in this game is so awkward. Look at this, I landed on that pipe and it still slid me off. I died here so many times where I gave up on the other thing at the far end and just grabbed whatever I needed to grab. And this is a good example of the biggest complaint I have with this game. It has instant death syndrome up the ass. Almost every time I died didn't feel like a fair death. It just felt annoying. Usually it didn't even give you a cool death screen to go with it. This one, that one, I'm gonna die here. Yeah. We should put a Vore counter on the screen. Oh. Okay. What is that shit? Either that or you would die in a comically stupid way that wasn't intended. That sounds... What the- what- What just happened? Did I just get yeeted by a raptor? Well, after you thwart the AI trying to kill you over and over again, it finally sends out the Robo-Rex. Now, I made a complaint in the first game that the T-Rex boss battle was extremely underwhelming, because it was. So this was his answer. Now we're suddenly playing Blood Dragon, and I'm fine with this. This boss battle can still feel a bit cheap. Again, it has instant death syndrome up the ass. Half the time, it doesn't feel like I did anything wrong when I died. Unless you get too close to it, then it just bores you. My frame rate- oh, well, I just got bored. Hey, I've seen that before. Overall, it's passable for what this game is. Cool concept, really silly. I'm fine with it. And at this point, you will destroy the AI. And you're still not really near the end of the game, so what could have been an antagonist is now gone. So what am I even doing? Well, more or less just a sightseeing tour as you try to leave. There's a nice little setup with all these bugs that I'm sure creeped out a ton of people when they played it. I made sure to clip this part and immediately send it to one of my friends who hates bugs. But the bugs themselves behave pretty much just like antlions. Yeah, nothing really crazy going on here. You do get a flamethrower with the weirdest design I've ever seen. What is the thing on top doing? I thought that's what I would be reloading, but no, you reload from the bottom. So what's this big thing jutting out of the top of it? Why would you ever need to aim down sights with this? What sights? How? Oh, whatever. It's a flamethrower. It does what you'd expect. I didn't even use it to kill the final boss, which was just a big dung beetle. I just used a magnum to cap it in the head. Hey, you remember that source code I talked about at the beginning of the game? Well, you picked it up, and the guy you're working with wants it. You give it to him, you get escorted with a bunch of friendly AI who are stupid as all hell. <laughs> what? Did they just kill themselves? <laughs> Fucking stupid ass AI. Then you go full circle and have to kill the Megalodon you see at the beginning of the game. This is the easiest boss battle you'll ever have. Most of it just has you sitting on the boat waiting for the Megalodon to even show up. All you gotta do is put a few bullets into his mouth when it opens his mouth and then it'll go away. Hell, I wanted to die at one point just to see what death animation would happen. And my friendly AI scared it away. And these guys are dumb. And then the game just abruptly ends. That's just the ending. What did I do? Who am I taking the source code to? What's the point? Well, you'll see more with the bad ending. You see, if you don't give the source code to the guy that demanded it, well, they all turn on you. Effectively, this gives you a good more chunk of the game. You have to fight humans for a little while who are, again, pretty dumb, so this doesn't really add a whole lot. But then this happens. What the heck, you play as a fucking dinosaur? What? Hold up. This is so cool. This is like Aliens vs Predator, but you're a raptor instead. The setup for this part really reminds me of Doom, where you control a revenant, 
and then once you get what you need, you just kill the revenant anyway. At least I did. I feel like most people did that. But this part is incredibly short, only like five minutes. I would love a full game like this. But once this is done, you continue on to the regular section of the game that you play no matter what ending you choose. So that's all it adds. Plus, you do get one more boss battle right before the Megalodon boss. The guy you refuse to give the source code to is really pissed, and now he has a mech. Kill him. My god, this game puts Doom 3 to shame with how much flinch there is. This is on easy difficulty to make a point, on normal you'd die much faster. The amount of shit happening on screen is so annoying. There's two other enemies that I can bring up that are really good examples for this. The first one are the Dilos, that spit acid at you and they might as well be hit scan. you can't avoid this shit. And if you get poisoned, you need an item to remove that poison. Yeah, kind of annoying. The second one are entirely new enemies that aren't dinosaurs at all. Basically, they tried to splice human genes with dinosaur genes. The result isn't scalies or something that might actually look cool, it's these abominations. Really reminds you of the Trigens in Far Cry 1, and they're about as fun to fight. They either run up you and hit you, or they have guns on their backs that stun the crap out of you. What is going on? Super annoying enemy, I'm not a fan. I'm also just not a fan of the design. I miss the lizard men from Turok. Anyway, side tangent over. Once you beat the bad ending, you still get the same ending. You still get that cutscene where the Megalodon is dead. What am I doing? What's the point? Fossil Fuel Monster Energy logo is a disappointment. And I hate saying that because I love what it is. I love what it's trying to be. The execution is just really lacking. Its optimization is so poor that it's almost unplayable and its actual gameplay is more irritating with how much instant deaths are around. While it's technically more advanced than the first game, I felt the first game had a lot more going for it. I will still shout out the dev of this game because clearly there's a lot of passion going on here, and we need more dinosaur games. Especially more dinosaur games without humans. Give me some anthros, let me play some dinosaurs, do something original, give me something different. But for now, I think I've said everything I need to say about Fossil Fuel Monster Energy Edition. Huge thanks to all of my YouTube members. If you become a YouTube member, you get to see my videos as soon as they're done, so you get early viewing sometimes up to a month early. And also a huge thanks to everyone that subscribed to this channel. Trying to reach 250k, it's there and I can see it. I want to reach it, so if you like what you're seeing, consider subscribing. And hopefully, I'll see you guys next video.